Elixian, good morning to you to this glorious investing and trading day, the last day before Easter. I hope you're going to enjoy your lovely long holiday. We've got plenty to get through, though. We've got a very, very bullish market view out today. And I want to walk you through that, what that means, as well as where NVIDIA is heading and all the major stocks. We've got some real insider trades I want to show you on ARM, which is kind of, kind of, uh, a nice indicator, as well as answer all of your questions. So put your questions in the chat and we'll run through them all. Uh, but let's get cracking. We've also got jobs data out and, and, and GDP data out and all of that kind of good stuff. But let's get onto that in a moment. Market isn't open yet, so we've got a little bit of time to just understand this and make you the best informed investor out there so you can make more money. That's what this is all about. This is not financial advice, of course. This is prepared by my cat. So take the, do it as you, as you wish. Make this the beginning of your research, not the end. Now, we've got from HSBC out a very, very bullish scenario on stocks. and. I kind of see the logic in what they're saying. They're basically saying that AI is going to solve everything, cure cancer, and, and give you competent leaders. No, not quite. But they're basically saying that the adoption of AI is going to drive productivity because people can do more with it than they can currently do. It means you can do more with more with less staff, and therefore your profits go higher. And they're essentially modeling the S&P 500 earnings per share, which in the long run is what matters. And they're saying, look, if we get fast adoption, we get 7.5% annual growth on, 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 on earnings per share, which is insane. And that would take the S&P, or that would mean the S&P should be worth 5,900 points right now. You might be thinking, whoa right? That's quite nice, isn't it? And if it's a little bit slower, their worst case scenario, it's still an extra, an extra almost 6% growth on top of what we are about to expect. So if these peanut counters are right, then we're in for a glorious decade of investing. I think we're in for a glorious decade of investing anyway, because I think we can make money in all scenarios, but that's a different story we can obviously get into in just uh, a, a moment. Now, the AI mentions per 100,000 sentences is through the roof. That doesn't necessarily mean that much, obviously, but it is something that's going to stick around. It's a little bit like .com in 1999, except this is actually going to deliver value faster, I think, than a lot of people are expecting. Although the tail end of AI, I think, is probably where the real value lies. So I'm a little bit, I'm kind of happy on both sides of that. Um, Morgan Stanley also saying that the cost of AI compute power. So they're basically saying, look, chips are actually getting massively cheaper because they're getting massively more powerful. And that, again, allows companies to use more and more and more computing power, as in more and more and more AI, which will, again, drive the profitability push from AI. So it's a, it's a real thing. It's not some sort of like, oh, let's, you know, the thing with dot com was, okay, dot com's here, the internet's here, let's build Facebook. But nobody could figure out how they were ever going to make money, right? Advertising online didn't exist. So it's very much a sort of pie in the sky, let's hope it turns out well kind of a thing, which is why 90% of those companies went bust. Whereas here, you're like, I've got a problem, but well, AI can fix it today. Right? They can make stuff better and more efficient today. And that's, I think, the real difference here. And that's also why, you know, funds are massively overexposed to it right now. And you could say, well, maybe that's the top of the market. Well, let me show you what's going on with ARM, because they obviously also build chips, sort of a little bit competing with NVIDIA there. In Europe, the fund managers have virtually no cash. They're just kind of fully invested, which is bonkers. If you are in, in European stocks, for, by the way, for our European friends, you're late. <laughs> if, or at least if you're getting into it now, you are late. You're late to the party. So I would not be buying European stocks right now, perhaps with a couple of exceptions. And that's because the, um, 
the bull run is essentially at 9099 or 9098 levels. And you haven't seen anything like that in 25 years. So be cautious when you see those headlines about how Europe is going to be the next big thing or something. No, that headline is six months too late. Small caps are still crap. Yeah, we kind of know that. Basically, small caps are not making money. That's why the IWM, the Russell is down. And then we've got NVIDIA here. And look at that lovely chart, right? It's basically almost vertically up, only beaten by Cocoa. And it just needs to hold this level here at sort of 880, basically. If it holds 880 and it keeps going up, we're all good. If not, we might be in for a little bit of a correction. And are we going to get a correction? Well, there is an indicator called fractional dimension, and you can look it up in your favorite charting software. And basically, when that collapses, it has a 66% probability of saying we're going to get a correction here. So say it collapsed here, and then we got this correction down here. Uh, it collapsed here as well, rebound a little bit. Now it's collapsing again. So we just did a little bit of sideways trend there. When it collapsed in 2019, in similar fashion, we got a bit of a correction. So it's not 100%, it's 66%. But it's basically saying we need NVIDIA to buy some more call options, which is what they've been doing, by the way. I'm going to put out a video on that later today, how NVIDIA props up its share price. It's not illegal. It's not dodgy. It's just it's just not, not really kosher. But... I'll explain that to you on, on a video a little bit later today. Now, let me show you something I just posted on, on X, which is this. This is a short little clip from optionswatch.io, which is a software we built. And this is a better version of a feature called Smart Money Trades. We can see the trades that the big boys do. And we can see they're all selling calls. I mean, massive amounts, like 20, I mean, dozens of millions of dollars all yesterday. And what does that mean if you're selling calls? It means you're bearish, right? It means you are, you think the stock's going to drop. But if you then use the second feature of Options Watch and you look up the previous positioning, you can actually see they're taking profits. So it's not quite the same thing. So it's not like, oh my God, arm is over. They're basically just saying, let me pull it up for you. Here it is. They're basically just saying, these are all the trades that they put out. And these are all into 2026. Massive amounts of trades down, call options down here in the 70s and 80s. And they would have made a shitload of money on those. So they're closing those trades. So they're just saying, we're happy. We've hit a profit target. And that's a good thing to do. I'd encourage you to do the same thing if you're putting on trades. But it also is sort of calling, you know, it's kind of calling the top, right? They're not, they're saying, I think, I think this is about it. So that's kind of an interesting one. There's another one, actually, which I put out just on SoFi. The first big trade I've seen in a really long time. Again, this is from optionswatch.io. $1.1 million spent on a call option yesterday. It's the single, the only large trade out there. And that's into January 2026. So basically somebody putting on kind of the same trade that I put on a couple of weeks ago, which is reassuring if you are me, um, or maybe just another person who's as crazy as me. So Again, don't put these trades on if you don't understand them and all that kind of stuff. But it's interesting to be able to get your hands on that data, wouldn't you say? I certainly think it is. So if you want to get your hands on that data, grab yourself a free one-month trial of OptionsWatch.io. We're going to release this feature publicly next week, I think. And uh, you will then get free access to that for, for, for that month. Uh, so check it out. Now, Good morning, good morning. So Italians are always late. I'm, not sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's racist, Danzo. Very, very racist. Uh, so, shall we look at the economic data? Or would you rather not know? Would you rather not know? I mean, sometimes not knowing is a peaceful place to be, right? Ignorance is, is, is a great defense in life. You're like, well, I'm not worried about it. I don't know anything about it. But let's have a look then. Let's have a look. And let's color code this as if we are six. So green is good. GDP growth was revised upwards. Now, is that good or bad? Well, you'd think it's good, right, initially. Soft landing miracle and all of that. 
Jobless claims are flat. That's good. No surprises are great for the market. Core PCE is a little lower than expected. It's been revised downwards, undoubtedly by some Biden pencil pusher. Jobless claims for weeks. It's also flat. No uh, PCE prices, exactly as expected. Consumer spending revised up. Uh, who would have thought? But yeah, it's all good, isn't it? It's all good. Corporate profits higher than expected. Let the party go on. Let the uh, booze-filled parties continue. Pre-market, we're looking okay. Nothing super exciting. Tesla down a touch, Nvidia and Apple down a little bit. We don't want those guys to go down too much, obviously. Meta, Google, Microsoft, Flat, Amazon, slightly in the green. Banks down just a touch here. We've got any big movers? Any really big movers? No. And you know why not? It's Easter. Almost Easter. Everyone's far too busy trying to figure out how they're going to afford chocolate over the Easter holidays because cocoa, my friend, is... Uh, Cocoa has gone up like pretty much nothing else. <laughs> this is the Cocoa chart. Cocoa in, well, what about last year? Last year, Easter. Cocoa was at 2,600. It's gone up more than three times since then. So what you should expect is that the chocolate you're buying, 261% up, will have less chocolate in it. It'll have fluffy additives in it. Very little chocolate, probably, at least if you're buying the, the, the cheap stuff. I just summarize got Belgium is present already a future of buyer hello from South Korea hello there Brandon um don't forget egg prices Lind well there shouldn't be any egg in your chocolate it's real chocolate let's talk about IBM as a long call should we IBM I actually did a video on IBM the other day. It's actually looking quite good. Yeah, look at that. This is a week's chart. But yeah, it actually looks pretty good. It's had a very, very nice run. But yeah, the economic data is good. Projections are good. AI is alive. The world's a beautiful place. Let's have a look at the US edition of Bloomberg. SPF prison time hangs on persuading judge he's no Bernie Madoff. 40 to 50 years. What do you think about that? Do you think he deserves 40 to 50 years in jail? Didn't murder anyone, did he? I mean... Yeah, he was an infantile idiot with a stroke of genius who ran a $50 billion crypto portfolio in QuickBooks. But is that 40 to 50 years in jail? I mean, rapists don't get 40 to 50 years in jail, do they? I sometimes think the sentencing thing is a little, is a little off. I mean, that chap there behind him, I wouldn't mind putting him into jail for 40 or 50 years. I'm sure there is good reason for that. But this guy just looks a little bit like I'm a tech nerd. I got carried away. What can I say? I don't know if that's an excuse. But yeah, let me know what you think uh, down below. Puff Daddy. Yeah, what, what is it with music artists all being apparently sex pests? I mean, the accusation, and I haven't read this in detail, it seems to be sex parties, orgies, drugs, and guns, right? Which is basically why you become a rapper. So it's not really particularly shocking, I, I would have thought, the accusations there. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. But I would have just thought, yeah, it's P. Diddy or Puff Daddy or whatever he was called at the time. Sean Combs, I think. Is it Combs? 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 But I don't know. It seems odd that these guys always get the book thrown at them. Um, but yeah, so that's a whole story in, in itself. Alba thinks SBF has 50 years. He gambled with investors' money and then acts as if he was just a tech nerd. Okay, there is somebody who is pissed off about it. Uh, that's fine. Um, Sam murdered hundreds of people's futures. But aren't those assets now actually worth more than they were when people were investing? I mean, is anybody actually losing any money on this? Uh, but I see, I think in front of a jury, he's not going to do very well if, if you lot are the jury. P. Diddy, I thought I told you that we won't stop. I love that, Brandon. I was listening, literally this morning, I was doing a workout and the music that was playing, it was it was some, you know, bad boy record song. And then it was um, R. Kelly, it was some remix, some old, old mixtape thing. Um, and I thought, well, all of these guys are now basically accused of, you know, some sort of sexual 
misbehavior. I think R. Kelly, I mean, he's, yeah. I mean, he married Aliyah Al 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 when she was, what, 15 or 16 or something? Okay, so he's got a, he's got a bit of an issue there. Yeah, I get that. Um, but I, I don't know. It's a strange, strange world we live in, isn't it? Anyway, let's have a look at the market then, shall we? Key quarters of US economy advanced at healthy clip to end to 2023. Absolutely part of the Biden re-election agenda, but we take it all because it's all profit. And let's have a look at the market. Markets, markets, markets. This is what we want. Bonds fall, stocks waver on Fed cut pushback. Is this, uh, was this Walla, Walla, Walla wallowing? When is he talking today, was it? A Powell speech is tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, just to ruin Easter. That's what you need. How do you ruin a holiday? Oh, I meant to make the Fed chair speak. Waller says Fed should delay or reduce cuts after new data. Uh, where is he? What does he say? Uh, Federal Reserve Governor Christopher Waller said he wants to see at least a couple of months of better inflation data before cutting rates. He spoke ahead of the PCE data on Friday. When you title a speech, there's still no rush. You have a point to make. Um, Waller joins voting member Bostick in wanting to wait and only likely expects one to two cuts this year. There he is, wallowing in his, 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 his thoughts. Palantir was cut by Monis Crespi Hart & Co., a house that nobody has ever heard of, so nobody cares what they say. That's what I would say. Estee Lauder upgraded. Okay, that's kind of positive. And yeah, Fed Chair Powell speaks tomorrow. And the market is doing what with this information? It's not freaking out. It's just like, yeah. We think the economic data is more important than a bunch of old fat Fed people who've basically been trying to say the same thing. So we're down a little at 898. I think it's quite important psychologically we hold the 900 today. We want to close above the 900 today. If you look at... Apple here, it's down only half a percentage point. It isn't really a lot. It's like less than a third of yesterday's gains. That was Palantir reacting to that downgrade, 1.8% down, probably. Yeah, probably just retail snowflakes. And then SoFi here is basically flat. Nice gain yesterday, though. 2.2% up. Is the Easter bunny coming to you this year? I actually have one that lives with me. I would actually like a bunny. I saw, I saw a, a, a rescue Easter bunny a couple of weeks back. I almost picked him up and brought him home. He was so cute. But I've got, I've got the next best thing. This one here is quite bunny-like, wouldn't you think? I think she's quite bunny-like, hey? It's called Squeaks. And she squeaks. So, you know, I think, I think we're quite good here with bunny rabbits. So buying Fisker is not fiscally responsible. I quite agree with you. Yeah, Fisker is just a, it's just a hit show. Fisker. I, I don't think there is anything that's going to come out of this. It's, it's worth two cents, my friends. Not really a lot you can do with that. You know, buying some puts up here was, would have been a good idea. But no, this is, this, is, this is bankruptcy. I don't know if there's any value in any of their assets. Probably not a lot. Then if they do, they own factories or anything, or have they leased them all out already. I don't know. She would look good in the Cadbury commercial, says John Meyer. Um, I don't think she would go for that, to be honest with you. She doesn't really like people other than me, pretty much. How says could you have a loom? At S at S E. You mean you you mean look? S E. Oh, this is rebounded a bit. They had a bit of a tough time, right? But doing all right. But in terms of, I mean, it's it's topping out, isn't it? And it's basically topping out here, which is this peak there and that peak here. And we hit it again. So, yeah, I would say the, the rebound thing is kicking in here. I don't think it screams. Actually, it does scream sell. My little smart indicator says 
sell. Why? Because it's formed a new low after this sort of sideways consolidation. Now, of course, isn't financial advice, but just telling you what I think the chart's saying. So yeah, not not brilliant, I would say. Volume, yeah, strong volume as well yesterday. Completely flat today. So it's if I if I had to enter a trade, I'd enter a sell here. But uh, that that's just me. That cross here isn't good either. Please share your screen. Oh, I'm sorry about that. There we go. Okay, sorry about that. This is a C. Um, big drop yesterday. Dropped below the range here. The peaks were one, two, and three. We go across of the 200-day moving average over the 50, which is bad, uh, very bad, almost as bad as having your houses raided by the feds. And it's just, yeah, not looking particularly glorious uh, right now. Somebody just said, rap isn't music. Really? Okay. I, I think I disagree with you on that one. Um, but the most cynical stock tuber, quite possibly, yes. It's what happens when you take a German and you put him into the UK and expose him to actual humor. We go like, what? There is funny stuff out there that shouldn't be allowed. Let's be a cynic about it. Our... Uh, Palantir bull or bear in April. I, I I don't really know what the catalyst is unless some some news comes out. I just think it looks at the moment it's consolidation, sort of bouncing sideways. There's fairly narrow range, twenty five to twenty six dollars. Do we have any big insider trades on that? Let me have a look in our little options watch thing here. PLTR. Yeah, not a huge trades, but they're all bearish. <laughs> so pretty much all bearish. Yeah, so I, I, I just think the sentiment at the moment is that it's trading at a fairly lofty valuation right now. And, and we need to see more before we feel like paying these prices for it. It's also been very, very volatile, right? So when something is this volatile, people just think, yeah, let's just wait for it to come back down into the teens and then pick it up again. Which screen has that? Adam, this is brand new. Uh, actually, it's not even released yet. It's called Smart Money Trades. So we can see live the dark pool trades, the, the block trades of the big funds, the big hedge funds and so on. And these are all relatively modest trades still, but they're like, you know, a couple of million dollars here on, on options. And it's, it's very useful. I think it's very useful. I think it's a very, very good indica indicator. If you want to get your pause on that, Head over to optionswatch.io. I'll put it in the chat. Optionswatch.io. Sign up for the free one month trial because we will release this feature next week. Prices will go up. If you sign up for the free trial, you will still get the old price. So you'll save 10 bucks a month, which I think is worth it. Think of the compounding. Why do they call it a dark pool? Because it's uh, it's private. Nobody can see it. So the only people, yeah, it's just not, it doesn't go into the stock exchange. They're private trades and people don't see it. And, and, and that's really why. So if you can see on some of the bigger stocks, you get, a, you get a whopping amount of trades in a day. This is NVIDIA yesterday. You know, eight and a half million, seven million, five million, five million, five million. Five million. I mean, these are, these are serious trades, right? And you can see what they are. You can see where they're positioned and... I think it's pretty good insight if you if you if you're in something, you know. Um, Neo. There's not not a huge amount of options activity on Neo usually, but let me have a look. Uh, just three trades yesterday. Too bearish, so it's pretty bearish. It's uh, in terms of money spent here. It's about five hundred sixty thousand bearish and 140,000 on bullish. Um, and those are, you know, $5 puts selling a $4 call. So yeah, largely, largely fairly bearish. Floating, do you sleep? I sleep eight hours a day, uh, like a baby, maybe eight and a half. And then I get up, I exercise for an hour and a half. I then have my breakfast brought to me and I do that for about an hour and a half. I write out my day and what I'm planning to do and general thoughts and, and, and inspirations. And then I, I do a bit of spot of work. 
went for lunch today, walked around town a bit, just got back. Life's actually pretty good. Yeah, so we're, you know, I think we're, I'm fairly efficient, I say, in, in putting out content uh, rather than massively hardworking. Uh, so I basically record stuff. I don't edit or anything. There's obviously a bit of planning that goes into it. And then I drop the pen and then I've got a lovely editor who does the rest. But, you know, we don't over edit, obviously. It's a fairly, fairly simple approach because I don't think it makes it better just stuffing stuff full with B-roll. I think it's just more like, let's get to the point. Can I give you as much value as possible in the shortest time as possible rather than just, you know, making these very verbose videos? Um, how come you can see what is happening in the dark pool, Alpa? Because we pay a freaking fortune for data. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So yeah, we pay an absolute freaking fortune for data so we can see inside of that. And we're going to make that available to you for a very, very, very small monthly amount. And so I say, like, get your hat, pause on it. You can, you'll be able to see it for free as part of the free trial. And then if you enjoy it, you can, um, you can stick around. At, at a discounted price because we're going to close this tier. At the moment, it's a new app. We started about a year ago. So we have a founders tier, which was kind of the original users who were fully aware that we were just building this. And it's now at a point where we are, we're going to close that founders tier next week. And then prices will go up for everybody else, except for the founders. You'll lock in that, that price basically for life. Um, How would you trade VIX, says Pierre? I mean, VIX is basically just not doing anything, right? Let me see, are there any big trades on VIX? I, I, I would doubt it, to be honest with you, but I know there are. Wow. Yeah, lots of them. 1.4 million puts, but most of most of them are actually bullish on it, which is kind of more the way I would look at that. Um, you know, go out a month or two or three. People also use it as hedging and and then VIX and it's just volatility isn't going up. So it's super, super low. It's super, super cheap. So you can buy it as a hedge essentially. Uh, and you can just say, well, at some point it's going to have to go up. So say you go out a month or something and you, you did that every month. It's pretty cheap. It's like $120. And if it goes up, something happens, say it goes to 19 or something, you make 400%. And you might do that for a couple of months and nothing happens and then eventually something will happen. That would be one way of doing it. Uh, Adago, Felix, you have a good life. I do. I know. I'm so... F I, I, I honestly... I'm so... I wake up every morning and going... I, I like pinch myself. I can't really believe how glorious life is. Like I wake up and Winston is, is you know, stretching out and he goes down and then his... His um, nanny takes him to the beach, goes for a swim, you know, while I'll do my exercise and stuff. Like, it's just, life is so easy, man. It's just, it's it's almost wrong how, how good and easy it is. And, and I just, I think everybody should have it. Everybody should be as chilled as, as, as I am nowadays because I remember a time when it was quite the opposite. Um, what kind of people are these big uh, dark pool traders? Um, they are basically uh, investment banks, hedge funds, large people who have, an, you know, somebody say who has a Morgan Stanley brokerage account and says, Morgan Stanley, I want to sell a million dollars worth of the stock. I don't want anybody to know about it. Can you sort me out? And they will. So there are institutional traders. Uh, Corey, did I hear you correctly? Arm topped? No, in my opinion. Uh, all I'm saying is, and I put it out on, on Twitter, if you follow me over there, Finance Felix is the handle. All I'm saying is that institutional investors checked out of, I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of trades yesterday. And they were all bullish trades and they've closed them. So I would I would say that's a pretty good indicator that they, they don't think there is much room to go. Ding, ding, ding. Appreciate that. Um, my nice of you to chat in. Since you don't work at a corporation, what do you do for health insurance? Oh, I pay for it. I have a I have an Allianz health insurance. I, I used to have sort of the gold-plated version with everything and, and everything. And then I realized, actually, it's much cheaper just to pay for, you know, 
the best hospital care possibly, because if I go to the dentist or something like that, it doesn't really cost very much. I can just pay for it myself. But if I have something serious, obviously I want to be able to get whatever I want, wherever I, I want. Um, and, and, and that, I think that costs 4,000 US a year. That's, that's about it, which I don't think is extraordinary. So I basically pay for doctor's visits myself. I don't go very often. I go to, I go to sort of holistic guys and I go to Chinese medicine guys and just to stay healthy. Oh, IWM's crossing up. Okay, we'll have a look at that in a second. But if I, you know, say I broke a leg or something, then I want to be able to go and find the best surgeon in the world, no matter where he is, and have the insurance pay for that. So that's, that's basically what I've done. So insurance is good. Same with life insurance. Like I've got a shitload of life insurance um, because I want the people who depend on me not to be in any dire straits at all, should I not be around. So I think, you know, insurance is good. Tesla down 1.3%, Apple down almost that percentage point. Ouch. NVIDIA is basically flat. 0.28% means very, very little for NVIDIA, which is rather volatile at the beginning of the day. But let's have a look at it. And here we go. You always see that big move at the beginning of the day. We're now down 0.8%, actually 894. We want to close above 900. That's really where we want to close. Uh, we can have a look at where the resistance sits for today. NVIDIA, and this is all options watch what I'm looking at here. And you can see that, right? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. And support and resist. Yeah, in my view, we should get sucked to $900. Why do I say that? Because we've got a pretty large number of put options at 900, a pretty large number of call options at 900. That should act as a sort of magnet. So I would expect us today end the day very close to 900. But, you know, I am, I am not, uh, I'm not Jesus, you know, which seems an appropriate remark given that it's Easter. Ah, nothing, nothing like offending people, is there? Happy Easter. Um... <laughs> Thanks again for making options watch. Can't wait for the new versions of the KDA. I love that. Thanks very much. I appreciate you being part of that. Favia, funny farm. You're just checking out IBM. Well, what's up with IBM? That's the second mention today of IBM. I made a video on it the other day. Something going on here with IBM? It's looking, looking kind of green pre-market, isn't it? I mean, not pre-market, beginning of the day even. 0.3% up. Party continues. Absolutely. It looks nice and nice and bullish. Uh, Favira there, funny farm. I got to be careful. I can't give you a uh, trade recommendations. That would not be kosher. The SEC would come and string me up. Uh, right now, Options are insanely expensive, though. I can tell you that much. IV percent is 100, so options are insanely expensive. So selling options is a better idea than buying options on this. That's really what I'd leave you with, and then I think you can figure out direction on your own. Did you see Fisker stock? Yeah, it's worth a lot now, isn't it? As a two cents? OTC stock? Yeah. Still down 22%. It can still go down some more. It now has four digits behind the dot. So it's 0 0.0205 cents, which obviously really, really matters. It is now worth $15 million. That was at one point, you know, $50 billion business or something. I, I, I don't get it, honestly. I've never got Fisker. I've never gotten Rivian. There are a bunch of these that I just don't get. They just haven't sold anything. That's the problem. Paruk wants to look at Meta's dark pool activity. We can do that. Absolutely. We're feeling... We're in a good mood today. Let me look at, so in, in optionswatch.io, up here, when it gets released, there is a button that says smart. And then you can just tick in, type in your ticker, and you'll be able to see the institution activity of the last 24 hours. And you can see it, like say that the largest trades, the largest three trades are, Bullish. What's what's Meta trading at right now? At what's the price? Four eighty-seven. So 
for example, this one here at the top, $17 million selling a 525 put, right? So we just open that trade. You click on it and you, and, you, and you see it. It shows you exactly what that setup looks like. If it loads, when it loads, here we go. And yeah, it's a bullish setup, isn't it? It's a bullish setup. So this would make money as long as we don't go down a lot, basically. And it would potentially make quite a lot, well, 12% up, but it's a large trade. I mean, $17 million on this. Uh, one, tra one, one trade would be 5,600 on that. So it, it gives you a, an interesting insight into what the big boys are thinking, right? And that's why I like looking at this. Aaron, will there be stock investment features coming? They will, they will. And we're working on it. Not in weeks, in in months. It takes time to do it well. Uh, and, you know, we've got all the data and stuff, but we want to do it well. We want to be able to do it so it's actually really useful. What, I, what I'd love is for you to be able to import your portfolio and for that to give you all the data on your portfolio that you'd ever want to see, alerts, earnings changes, all that stuff. So you have one central place where you can see everything about your investments. That's really the, 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 the goal here. And we'll get that this year, but it'll it'll take a little bit of time. I'm in the way. I, I appreciate I'm in the way, but there you go. You can see the trade. So there we are. Um, obviously, feel free to get yourself a, a, a free trial on, on, on Options Watch. I think there's a link below down, down in the description somewhere to it. If not, if you can't find it, then go to optionswatch.io. You can't see that. Uh, there we go. And there's a literally a free one month trial to it, completely free of charge. And the beauty is when you get on the free trial, if you want to keep using it, you will lock in the old lower price because prices will go up next week. So I'd encourage you to do that. Otherwise you'll miss out. And then you'll be like, Felix can I have the old price and I'd have to say no. Um, it'd be nice to save search, says Vitor. You sort of can. Um, I mean, you can you can put multiple tickers in here, you know, here. And this data is relevant for a day because that's when it's brand new. After the day, it feeds itself into the little red and green bars here, which is called open interest. And we'll put out some educational videos to explain how that really works and how to use it properly. Uh, so we'll, we'll definitely do that because I appreciate not everybody you know, understands this. We've got three market makers on our team who made a living on exactly these features. So we've got a pretty good insight into how it works. So we'll definitely do that. Uh, but I appreciate the feedback. So this is where we are. Do you want to see the live market again? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? This is where we are. Let me just hit the refresh button on this. And Apple is a little concerning. Meta now down one percentage point. Tesla is down again. So there is definitely some southerly movement here. But Apple is really, Meta also falling there, a whole percentage point. Apple really not looking very good. I, let me see. Okay, it's not as bad as it seems because we are still above these lows here. Hold the 169, hold the 168. That's really where you want to be. And, and just don't drop below 166. You drop below that and you're in trouble. Tesla. Made some nice money on our Tesla trades. Again, that's okay. Nothing major there. Bit of consolidation within yesterday's trading range. So it's nothing too shocking, really. But again, of course, it would be nice to close at the higher end of that trading range here. Um, Cedric, please add PL curves over time. It's coming, my friend. Yeah, it's also a feature. We, we, we've done the back end work for it. We're just waiting to finish the, the front end work of that. So that's also coming. Yeah, thanks very much. You can't get your option watch to scroll in and out. Anyone else, Paul? Uh, we're about to release a, an upgrade to this slider here, to this column. You'll be able to move this up and down. So right now it's, it's a little bit jerky on some stocks, especially the ones that have gone just vertically up. Uh, so for that reason, we are going to be able to move the chart up and down. Give, give, it, give it a few days, hopefully, and it'll, it'll be, be out. Um, brilliant. Right, my friends, I appreciate you watching and tuning in. Make sure you grab yourself a free trial of OptionsWatch.io. Enjoy the rest of the day. 
have a glorious Easter. Eat all the chocolate there is because chocolate will be unaffordable after this Easter. <laughs> It'll only be for the rich and, uh, and, and those who own NVIDIA. And I wish you a glorious long weekend. I'll put out some more videos later on in the day. So make sure you're subscribed and I hope to see you on the next one.